I should just get up and start tripping like that. <laughs> Throw my hat down. And shit. Hey, people go click on that. <laughs> That's the intro right there. That's yeah. the intro. Yeah. Look both ways when you cross that street. Dot your eyes and cross your T's. Measure twice, but cut once. Yeah, yeah. Love life, live it up, bro. Yeah, yeah. Dream is good, do the work too. There ain't nothing you can't work through. And there ain't nothing I can't handle. There ain't nothing I can't handle. I look to the sky. Yeah, yeah. And I thank God that I'm alive. Yeah, I look yeah. to my wife. Yeah, yeah. And I thank God she by my side. Yeah, I've been yeah. through a lot, but I survived. Real it life. weighs on my heart from time to time. Real but there ain't nothing I can't handle. Peace, big love, big blessings, even bigger living. Everything that come with it and everything in between. You are tuned in to Thinking Out Loud with Samuel David. It's just a conversation. Uh, and I'm your host, Samuel David. And I got a special special guest today but before i get to my special guest i want to make sure y'all like and subscribe on the youtube thinking out loud with samuel david samuel david convo uh, all the social media is big sam 87 or thinking out loud convo uh, tap in stay tuned in and if you want to be a sponsor of thinking out loud with samuel david if you want to reach more people than your current reach holl at your boy <laughs> all right enough of all that i got a special guest today as is every guest Every guest is special. That's how you, you know, that's how you come to this space. But my brother today is super special. Super. He's a comedian. I would say he's definitely a community advocate. Like oh, when I see this brother, he, he's definitely advocating for the city of ours in a major way. He's a father. He is somebody who has turned lemons into lemonade. Oh. Right? One of the most productive people that I've seen in real life and in action. Um, Thank you. The most amazing. Mr. Pooh Hef. Oh, man. What's Thank happening, you, man? man? Thanks, Brody, for the intro, man. I couldn't have done it better myself, man. I like that. You didn't say, you know, tell them how handsome I am, but, you know. Let them know. Yeah, they hey, see it. It's you, hey, I'm the specialist guest. No, I ain't going to say that. That's a lot of special guests, man. <laughs> Let's get it, man. I'm honored to be here, though, man. For, for real, sure. man. Hey, it's I've been a privilege to, to have you. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, I was, as, I was, as I was getting everything tuned up, I was like, you know, I'm probably about to laugh for like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, fact. Because you're really one of the funniest people I know in real life, bro. And I, facts, I try to make it a point to tell you that when I see you. Yeah. Because you know you know when you don't. Right, right, right. It hit a little different when you get a with chance somebody. to hear it in real life. Yeah, if you somebody. trust what they're saying, because everybody's exactly. opinion don't matter. But man, my favorite question to start to show off with, Pooh, is how is your spirit? Man, my spirit is so good right now. I'm telling you, Sam, it's like everything going my way. Mm. So. My spirit is just in, I mean, hot spirits, man. Word. Dude, get the Ooh. phone going off. You no, made me put my stuff on. I made on you put your me. joint up and on. Even... <laughs> oh, I done started a, a video uh, call. Started a, a, a Skype call. A Skype call. That is that is not how we do on Thinking Out Loud. No. Uh, I'm going to go all the way mute. No disrespect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you're having your way out here. Yeah, basically, you know what I'm saying? Especially with the comedy scene. I'm um, doing a lot of shows out of town and, and just getting a lot of looks and God just blessing me. So I ain't going to act like everything is perfect, but, you know, I'm coming through the storm, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. a nigga doing, you know, a nigga can just thank God, man. I, hey, I don't mean to put God and nigga together, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm thanking God, man. Hey, man, hey, man I don't, you know, some would say if we talking about real niggas. God might be the realest. God is the realest. He is nigga. the realest. God a real nigga. Man. You feel me? I get that tatty. Don't watch God a real nigga. <laughs> the realest. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. Now I love how you you make it a point to give your reverence to the Most High, man. Because I think right. a lot of things we do, we it would be whack to not acknowledge. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? The things that are greater than us. Because right, right. they say don't bury your gifts, and you got yours. Right. I, yeah. Exactly. Ooh, man, it's exceeding abundantly. A bless. Yeah. Fact. So. You talk about hitting out of town with the comedy, man. What is that? What is it like? Because um, you know, comedy is a universal language. In fact, everybody love to laugh. Um, but regionally, do you find yourself having? Do you switch up the comedy when you're in different spots? Because it hit different, Midwest, Southern. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it hit no different from region. Okay. But but ages do. Like I did a show in uh, Junction City, man. That motherfucker was at a bingo hall. <laughs> it's at a bingo hall, real shit. I promise it's a bingo hall. Mm -hmm. And everybody there was like 50, 55 and up. Word. Yeah, so it was just like I was spitting some of my, I was doing my shit, my jokes, and it was just like it was not resonating with them. Worst show today. I mean, I'm going to get Junction City, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, no, it was just like they were so old, they didn't get my jokes. So definitely with age, 
you know, being a comedian, anytime you do a show, mm -hmm. you should ask, like, what's the age? What's the, the target age of this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, yeah, I don't, so I don't think it changed by region. I think it changed by, by age for sure, though. Mm -hmm. Knowing your audience. Yeah, exactly. You got to know your audience. That's real. Would, would you say that's one of the bigger learning lessons you've learned so far from the the planning portion of comedy? Facts. One of the least. Yeah. yeah. Facts. As a comedian, is there anything off limits? Because we in the space of like cancel culture, they could get you out the door quick for at least 30 minutes. They ain't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. a long time. But like, is there any jokes or any conversation that you like, I ain't touching it? Uh, I kind I, I try to stay away from uh, gay jokes. Okay. I, I kind of stay away from that. And, uh, you know, and if you're talking about like as far as the future, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm never, I'm, I'm never getting dressing like no girl, putting on no girl wigs. That's off limits for me. Word. It goes against everything I stand for, mm. and and I mean to each his own. But I'm yeah. never doing that. I'm never dressing like a female. That's not your style at all. Nah. You know that's a, I think that's an interesting space, and we 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 just think out loud here, all right? Right. And I like to say there's no harm in conversation, um, it's like, especially if it's enlightening, productive in space and whatnot, right? Um, but man, you know I think that is an interesting thing because I remember growing up like watching Shanae. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wanda. Yeah. Right, yeah. they was hilarious. Yeah, it was funny shit. On um, so I think some things done in good taste, right, with strong intention, it hit different than when it's like, I need to do this to be funny. Facts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And some yeah. comedians seem like they have to like, like you don't got to do it. You don't got to do it yet. No, somebody, a lot of niggas just like attention and do anything. <sighs> attention is that's attention is a bigger drug than fentanyl right now talk to us it, it's killing more people than fentanyl attention is mm -hmm. it may not kill the body it may not actually pass away but it's killing people's mental mm -hmm. and, and what they'll do a person will do anything for attention and that's why we seeing all this you know this craziness on facebook and mm -hmm. people doing this people doing that because it's attention attention yeah. is that's worth more than money to some people you know so where do you find that balance, bro? Because you know I'm a I'm a, a hip hop artist. If we do the podcast, I I um I eat off people's attention span, right, 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 right. as you do, right in the comedy exactly. space. Uh -huh. Where do you find that balance, bro? Of like, okay, I'm not doing this for clout or for attention, uh -huh. but I'm doing this because I got your attention. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think the balance is just knowing like, uh, this is my profession. Mm. This is what I'm doing. I'm not just I'm not just the person that's just out here seeking attention by doing anything. Yeah. I'm a comedian, Pooh Hefner, Big Sam, a rapper, Sam mm -hmm. David, the rapper. So we acquire attention. We require attention. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I think that's that's the biggest difference. What you identify in a, are you having an identity crisis or, or are you being, you know, truly yourself? Yeah. Or do you just want attention for nothing? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, for nothing. Cause that's why we got these women that that that, that you know they get these mouths on them. They mm. turn into hoes because they want mm. attention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now you got these niggas. They turn into hoes because they want attention. Ooh. Straight like that, man. I'm a preach now, baby. I'm a man. Preach, talk, man. Talk, about it. talk about it. Come on now. <laughs> so we 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 talking about the women and attention. I've seen on the internet, man, where they like kind of come for you. Mm -hmm. the, the ladies, your past ladies is mm -hmm. like on your head. I seen one you had your tire slashed. Slash. Oh. Man, but you know what I thought was dope in that situation, Pooh, is like, I said it before we start. I said it here. You are naturally a hilarious brother. Thank you. For sure. Right? And the way that you turned those lemons into lemonade, where does that come from? Like being able to recognize this situation ain't in my favor, mm -hmm. but I'm going to turn it into mine. Like when did, where did you recognize that gift, bro? Um, you saying like when in my life did I recognize that? That I you do you had the ability to turn lemon shit into sugar. Man, honestly, just recently, okay. uh, when I just start putting you know like events from my life because people think that I put everything from my life on Facebook. I don't. I put what I want y'all to see. For so sure. when something bad happened to me and I go live with it, and my life be y'all entertainment, but I can make it funny because I'm naturally funny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and that's what that's kind of when I noticed, like, okay, everything bad. If it if it got something to do with a woman, and it happens to me, and it's bad, and I can make it funny, I'm gonna go live with it because it's kind of like a gimmick now. Okay, it go right along with my name. They call me Pooh Hefner. You know the women. And now here's the women trouble. So now it's a gimmick, and then now people waiting. People see me like, what well, a girl didn't done your <laughs> shit now. You know, and it's been so much shit that women done before. 
you know, I had the spotlight as a comedian. I could tell you some crazy shit yeah. females done done to me. What you doing to them, Pooh? Because <laughs> I'm seeing a trend, bro. What, what you doing to them? Well, number one, I'm putting that wood on them. You know what I'm saying? I do this here. She told you I pick her up. Ah, that's the move. Ah, that's the move. Right there. So I got to stop that. Okay. Ladies, if you're watching, don't go crazy. <laughs> no, that's why. That's why. So I, I dug into an insider friend of ours. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, I'm about to have Pooh on the show. And I like I'm prepared when I come on, but I also like to get some inside scoop on like where should I really where should I ask right. the questions? And it's funny because ladies was one of them, right? Right. In the relationship space, man. So like, is there a lady in your life? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is there is someone in my life, uh, but I don't know what we doing. We not really. Okay. Uh, I care about that person, but uh, as far as like just, as far as you stumped me with that one, nigga. <laughs> you stumped me with that one, nigga. I just, <laughs> hey, I was about to plead the fifth on your ass. I was say, oh, I'm not answering. But them. you care about her, so you couldn't. Yeah, you know, uh, like that. there is a certain person I care about. We got a lot of history, mm -hmm. and uh, but I don't know if we're identifying as, as in a relationship. Okay, that's saying? fair. That's so, fair. And I ain't here to blow up nobody's spot. So well, don't, don't blame me, ma'am. Don't blame Sam. That shit didn't fucking sell, Sam. <laughs> well, too late, huh? My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. <laughs> nah, man, nah. Like I, like I said, though, you are genuinely one of the funniest people I know. And I always Thank enjoy having a conversation with you, right? Um, uh, another piece that I wanted to ask you about is as you're hitting the road, what are some different learning lessons you learned from different cultures, right? Because it's easy to get it's easy to get trapped at the crib, right? right Especially right. when you get a little bit of love at the crib. It's hard to get love at the crib for one. Right, but when you start to get love at the crib, it's easy to get trapped here. It is. What What keeps you on the road and what pieces of culture have you picked up on the road like to further your career? Uh, what keeps me on the road is just the hunger for more. Like, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm touching this person. Now this person know who Pooh F is. Now, you know, people in this city, because there ain't nothing like stepping on that stage and these people don't know you. Yeah. And you rock the stage, now they remember you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Pooh has I'm going to remember that name. So that's what kind of... I, I, it ain't the region for me. It ain't the United States. It's the world. The world, you know Craig. Saying? The world, Craig. That's what I'm trying to touch, man. Just like, uh, man, a quick story that really impacted me and made me change. And really like, man, I got to change the world. I'm in Walmart mm -hmm. probably about, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. And I'm I'm getting my shit, I'm shopping, whatever. And this, you know, it was people in Walmart crying and shit. And I was like, it was a white woman bawling. I'm like, damn. And then I seen another person, and they was rushing out of Walmart. I said, what the hell going on? You know what I'm saying? So I keep doing my shopping, whatever. This black dude come up to me and he said, man, you hear what happened? <laughs> this real shop, bro. And he's like, man, you hear what happened? I feel like I ain't supposed to laugh at that story. <laughs> hey, he said, man, you hear what happened? I said, no, what happened? He said, Mike died. I'm like, Mike? So now I'm tripping. I'm like, oh, shit. You talking about, you know, you talking about Michael Bradley, my, my best friend, brother? You okay. talking about, you know? He said, no, Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, hey, it kind of pissed me out because I'm like, nigga. <laughs> I mean, I was like, damn, oh, Michael Jackson did, but it also was like, <laughs> Hey, it was like, damn, this man made this big of an impact mm. to make white people cry, to mm. make black people cry, Chinese people cry. People that never met this man in their life was crying. Wow. And I said, when I die, I don't want to Wichita just to mourn. I want the whole world to mourn. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I was, man, you know, so when I be doing my thing, moving around, like, I'm going to leave that stamp for my family, my kids, that legacy. I love that. And uh, as far as stuff that I picked up, just... Through different cultures, I think uh, uh, networking. Yeah, I think here in Wichita, we lack the willingness to network. Mm -hmm. And you go to other cities, bigger cities, you shake your hand, meeting friends, everybody networking, you get everybody's number because you never know who somebody can be. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest thing that I learned from going to different cities: networking. And talking to people you you never seen before, and you're like, "Hey, what's up, bro? You know what I'm saying? Oh, what you do? I do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got friends to this day from 
Nashville, Tennessee, uh, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, all over. People that I, you know, business people or just street niggas or whatever that I met that we keep in contact to this day. That's fire. It's on that journey, just naturally being who you are. Just na exactly. And, and picking up on that. No, that's fire. That's fire. I see. Um, I see Stacy from the wood. Right, right. right. Called you poo poo half. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, he got me. I, I I peeped that story, man, and just again how everything come back full circle. For exactly. You. Facts. That's fire. Facts. Yeah. Fire. When you just yourself, man. Speaking of being you, being yourself, um, I feel like you show up as you no matter where you at. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Um, except that news story for the elsewhere fest. Oh yeah. You real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was nervous. That's the first time. I, hey, man, I tell people all the time. I don't know why, man. Like you could put me in front of a camera and I never get nervous. Yeah. One camera I get nervous in front of the news camera because <laughs> you can go back the Ellsworth Fest. I was I was nervous on that one, and then we did one when I did my show mm. when we was actually in the studio at Cake News. Yeah, I was nervous on that one too, and <laughs> yeah, I was hella nervous. I ain't gonna lie, man. What is it about news cameras that get you nervous? Because you a performer, you an artist, man. So what, why does the news get you nervous? Man, I think it's because man, I mean, I caught a case and went to prison, and it was all over the news. It was it was. I don't know. I mean, I think that's maybe why, you know, I just, now I just associate the news with the police wow. or I'm in trouble, some deep part of that. So it's like, or I'm not supposed to be here in front of this, you know, and I got to get over that because I'm supposed to be there, you know, uh -huh. and it's just like something deep down inside of me, it makes me nervous. Like, oh man, I'm next to this, to this white girl, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, doing this story and yeah, but you, you're right. I was nervous. Facts. Now it's, it's just a little bit of trauma, man, because I know you definitely you got a, you had a history, right? And mm -hmm. you go to your Facebook page, first thing you say is gang member, boom, right, boom, right. Um, on the news article, and then right next to it is where you was at at that time, right. putting on big shows and whatnot. Right, right. Facts. When when you had to sit down for your situation, because how long did you sit down in the three years? Three years. Long, grueling ass years. Three years, but like I was doing life. <laughs> Right, listen. Because I went during COVID, man. It was during COVID. Too. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> so I remember you came to the crib and you did the um, you did one of the interludes for my album. Facts. Yeah. So it, it had to be a little bit after that. It man. was a little bit after that. Damn. It was a little bit after that. So sitting down, um, and you could you could share if you like, you know, the reason you had to sit down. Okay. Yeah. Do you care to share that? Yeah, I share. Uh, the reason I sit down is just uh, having one foot in the street and one foot. In comedy, I should have just been straight from comedy, but uh, uh, I was at the scene of uh, a homicide. Somebody was mm -hmm. killed, you know, and uh, the, the police started looking for me. The roller started looking for me, and instead of just going down there and telling them like, "Shit, I don't, I don't know nothing," I just kept ducking them. They were looking for me. They went to my mama's house. They going to my auntie's house. They looking for me. It's tough, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not, you know, I'm not. So. Uh, what had ended up happening is one of my best friends, man, one of my mentors, one of my big homies, R.I.P. Fat, man, gone but not forgotten, man. He uh, he passed away, and so uh, I went to his funeral. I went to his funeral, and they they knew that I, they knew that me and him was close, and they knew that I'd be there. But they actually lose my Snapchat. This is before it was popular for undercovers and stuff to get on your Snapchat. Yeah, that's why I read on the. Uh, on a news article, and it's another news article where it's a uh, Kansas gang member, uh, no, social media used to catch Kansas gang member. Right, so they was on my Snapchat. So of course I was snapping, you know, at the funeral or whatever. So they tried to get me from the funeral. I was in the car with other parties. You know, we went on a high speed chase. I jumped out, they caught me. Uh, they caught me with a burner, a gun. And yeah, they took me down through there, man. It, it was, you know, some other things surrounding the case. Sure. And, you don't got to get in the hole. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, they 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 gave me three years. They gave me they gave me four years, but I did three. So just so I'm I'm, I'm catching the whole the chain of events, right? Because this this is a space of like reflection for sure, right? Right, right. As right. well as forward moving, man. So you you mourning the big homie, so I'm right. sure that's hitting your chest. That's hitting, yeah. Then they they take you. Yeah. You got kids at this time. Yeah, I had a kid on the way at this time so you too. Got a baby on the way. Yeah, and then my baby mama left me in jail. That's whoosh. Y'all ain't shit. City girls down five hundred. <laughs> so no, nah, real life though, bro. So you sat down for three years. Yeah. Right after the big homie passed, you got a baby on the way. Yeah. What was that experience like, and what did you take away from having to sit down for three years for something 
you didn't do. Something I didn't do. Yeah. Right? What is that? What was that learning experience for you? It was just like think. Like it only take two seconds to just think, analyze the situation. Yeah. Just think. If I had, I would have just thought and quit, quit trying to live up to the street code. Like I felt like I was doing something right. I felt like I was G, a G or living up to the standard by ducking the rollers, not going to talk to them. In actuality, I could have went down there and sat down and talked to them. Hey, man, I don't know what happened. I didn't see what happened. Mm-hmm. Stop looking for me. Word. It was two things would have happened. They would have took me to jail or let me go, but they would have let me go. Mm-hmm. So if they hadn't been looking for me, I never would have got jammed up with a pistol. I would have been able to move it around how I wanted to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we so used to trying to live up to, to the street code of, uh, I ain't even talking to the police, whatever. whatever. Uh, you can go talk to them and tell them you don't know nothing. That's what I should have right. did. That's the thinking part of it. Okay. You know, hey, I don't know nothing. Can y'all stop looking for me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, uh, it's just handling things as a, a adult. Before I got locked, before I went to federal penitentiary, I was a kid at my, uh, I, I didn't, everything was just living day by day with me, you know, so sitting down in the feds, which is a very, very, the tension is high and the respect level is high. So okay. I learned a lot on respect. And number one, I learned planning and executing. Sitting down, write your stuff down. This is what I need to do. This is how I need to do it, and actually set out and execute that. And that's what I brought home with me. So yeah. I'm more methodical. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. It's it's um it's irony in that. Exactly. Right. Because if you do, you think if you didn't have to sit down for them three years, right, get some of that that internal like, okay, let me let me get my shit together. Do you think you would be on the path you are now? Absolutely not. No doubt. Absolutely not. If I could rewind the hands of time and not go to prison, I would still go to prison. Okay. Even though I lost out on you know, seeing my son born, even though I got left by somebody I was in love with, it's mm-hmm. just like that's that's what had to happen to me for me to realize and for me to wake up. Like, you know, I gotta handle stuff a certain type of what. One hundred. Mm-hmm. Man, you know when I when you when you look at some of the greatest men in history, some of the greatest men in even like biblical sense of things, right? right? They had to go through some bullshit. Facts. <laughs> you had yeah, to go facts. through the wilderness right? to know for one, can I handle what's, what's about to come to me? Facts. Right? Because right? you could have came out on some bullshit yeah. and you wouldn't be on this path you on now. Right. But bro, to see a, to see a meteoric rise, and it's dope, especially in a town like ours, everything's right. connected. Exactly. But you taking it so far past your community, past the hometown, right. like to the moon, to right? The moon. Which exactly. is really dope to see. So I'm I'm glad you were able to find that piece of yourself. Right, facts. Right. Because right. right. every brother don't get that opportunity. Some niggas just out here lost. They just lost. With yeah. playing follow the leader from somebody exactly. even exactly. more lost. Exactly. You know what I mean? So man, the the, I want to continue down this path because the other thing the homie that I reached out to told me to ask you about was gang culture, uh-huh. right? Um, and I'm not, listen, this is not no case in incriminating type situation. It's more so like, yo, knowing that you a grown ass man now. Right, right, right. And we had an opportunity to speak to some youth. Right. And I know you constantly speak to the youth. Right, facts. When you speak to the youth, what is the point of some things that you like to make sure they understand? Because, you know, sometimes if you got kids. Yeah, yeah. It'd be in one ear out the other. Exactly. And sometimes we got to go through it to become better. But what are some things you let the kids know to, like, be better young men? Right. Uh, Man, be yourself. Don't Mm -hmm. follow nobody else. Be yourself and and try to figure out who you, what you want to do at a young age. Uh, Man, we from Wichita. It's a big gang culture here. So when you go to school, your friends, somebody going to be affiliated. You know what I'm saying? And it's just... uh, Man, I don't want to say just say no because that's cliche and all that. I don't want to say that. <laughs> just you know say what I'm saying? No. But, uh, man, just be yourself. Man, that's what I tell my sons. Man, be yourself. Don't get in the gangs. Don't fall. Because, really, I'm going to speak on uh, some real shit just being in the streets. You know, I I was in the streets since I was 14. And uh, some real shit that I'm going to say. And, and from going to federal penitentiary, that kind of woke me up as well. Mm-hmm. If it ain't... Uh, if it ain't, and I'm not saying it's cool to be in none of these gangs either. Don't don't misconstrue what I'm saying. But if it ain't Junior Boys, if it ain't Second Streets, if it ain't Ash Parks or something of that nature, 
if it's, you know, Bloods, Crips, it's really kind of off-brand because that's from Cali. Mm -hmm. We banging them people shit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never been on them streets. We ain't never, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We banging they shit. No, no strife to the homies or to, to people that's in the streets, you know, my blood partners or you know, my crib homies or nothing like that. Yeah. GD homies, none of that. You know, I respect, you know, what you, we respect the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But just going in into the feds and seeing, okay. you go in and you say, hey, look, look, I'm too. I'm blood. I'm part root. You know what I'm saying? And I say, where you from, homie? I'm, I'm saying, I'm from Kansas. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Mm. They gonna, a lot of people gonna shun you off, but a lot of people gonna accept you. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people gonna look at you as a send off. And he ain't from the land. I didn't heard that so many times. Word. He ain't from the land. He ain't from we from send him off. Tell him go do this. Tell him go do that. You gonna have to prove yourself there by doing something to somebody simply because you ain't from Cali and you claiming that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I man, I just think that the gang culture is. Uh, uh, I watched a, a X rated uh, interview and he called it a, a parasitic organization. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is a man who was a garden block crit. Uh, uh, since he was 12 years old, went and did 26 years for that. And he, he, he getting out and he like, man, don't get in it. And they from the land, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, and I can just go on and on about interviews. I seen OG Pabru niggas, OG Crip niggas, and they kind of pushing and preaching the same thing. So yeah, I think just kind of coming at them like that may, but at the end of the day, we can only get in them. Cause I had people, my uncles, my daddies, I had people tell me this type of stuff from uh, a mm -hmm. kid, and I didn't want to hear it because it's like it's coming from somebody. And I we even had people come to our school and talk about this shit. Yeah. But it's coming from somebody. It's like, oh, they supposed to say that. They ain't trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. So it'd be, I mean, I think it's hard to reach the youth. Man. It's hard. It's hard. It's tough. It's almost like again, I just go back to a lot of times. It takes either an example, like you got to see somebody around you be made an example. Or you gotta have something wild happen to you. Right, right, right. And I got a bar in one of my songs. I say, man, uh, pull up on Scooney, make it home for dinner all in one swoop. My kids love, my kids privilege. They got mom and daddy under one roof. Two sides to every story, only one truth. Six shots from seven niggas in one coop. Life's quick. <laughs> That's like, a hell of a bar. It's like you the seventh one. Six shots. You, right. you hit, bro. Like you now you you part of this thing now. Right. And I think even as you mentioned, like some of the the situations or the, the the gangs that originated here in, in our town mm -hmm. was built off more so community, right, right, right? right? And brothers trying to build, but then generation after generation, the lineage right, breaks right. down. The reasons right. for creating a community break down, um, and then folks lose the plot, right? Right? right. Um, and kind of like you mentioned, and I got partners from from different sections, and mm -hmm. I I never. I mean, I say I ain't never judge niggas. I, I judge some of them. Some right, right, right. Stupid as hell. Right, fast, <laughs> right. right. Come from both parents, all of that. But I also recognize a lot of times the brotherhood that brothers lack. Right. 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 And so it's it's like a, with every everything has a contradiction to it, right. which I, I respect and I get. Um, man, so you was talking though about even like some of the older cats that you had in your life. Right. Now you an adult. And we the grown ups. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> How we the grown ups. We now. the grown ups, right? Now we understand the shit they was saying. You feel me? And I think that's even doper. As you grown in your life, Pooh, man, have you, do you find it a struggle for folks to look past your past? Like, how do you have to consciously be like, I am not what I was, or who I was? Uh, Man, honestly, no, because, well, yes. Yes. And that's, of course, with, going to get jobs or mm. trying to get in the door with certain people, you know, business people, they'll go look that up. Cause some people just go Google you and type it up and like, Hey, it's saying this about you. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to get that, that article off the, it's an article on the internet that tells everything and then it, people type it up. So yeah, on that aspect, yes. Like, mm -hmm. um, but as far as like in the community, man, I can honestly say that people really, you know, accept my change and, you know, the homies that I do still hang with that may be gang members or whatever, when they had these conversations, uh, just as coming home and sit down like, hey, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. And yeah. they respect it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had homies, hey, look, 
you know, you talk, I want to come to your show, mm -hmm. but I'm funking with these niggas. Mm. So I ain't going to come, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to put you in that situation. Or yeah. I want to go to the club with you. Uh, but if I'm, or I might see him in the club. What's up, mommy? You know what I'm saying? Talk. Yeah, but man, I got some shit going on. So I ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Put you in that situation. So I'm going to. So, That's love. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember the first time I realized niggas loved me. I was headed to the club one time and and one of the homies, older homies, was walking in the parking lot. He said, Hey, Sam, you might want to go home. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. No, say less. You ain't got I'm, not, I'm out of here. Right? Yeah. Facts. <laughs> um, you ain't got to say no more. You don't got to say no more. Um, but one of the reasons I asked about that past thing is I seen you had a, a, a little bit of strife with Juneteenth. Right. I'm trying to get into there, right? And a right. lot of your history was brought up. Um, I don't know if that's something you wanted to touch on. Or yeah, I touch on it. Um, yeah, they uh, they hit me up on about the Juneteenth. And uh, it was like, hey, would you like to be a judge mm -hmm. for the uh, the beauty? Well, I think it was like the beauty pageant part. Just be a judge, sit on the panel. Uh, I was like, for sure. You know, yeah. that was an honor to me because Juneteenth is, is, you know, a big event, a prominent event, a prominent black event commemorating black history yeah. in Wichita. So uh, I was excited. I mean, ecstatic for oh, it. So uh, they sent me the, the, they sent me my little, you know, instructions <laughs> and shit. I was like, hey, hey, I'll buy a little chick. I'm telling her, yeah, I'm just reading these instructions for a little beep. You're going to have to be, <laughs> be quiet. I'm doing this. You know, so I'm doing all that. And uh man, I hadn't heard nothing from him and the thing was the the, the next day. Okay. So uh I hit a certain somebody up and I'm like, Hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Uh am I gonna rehearse with y'all or what? She's like, Oh yeah, about that. Um, I got some bad news. I'm gonna call you. And I'm like, What? What's the bad news? You know, I'm sipping with you know, I'm sipping with the fam right there with like a barbecue. So I'm like, what's the bad news? So and so she called me and she like, yeah, um, we were talking and your name came up and somebody was like, heard your name. And they're like, what? Wasn't he involved with whoop de whoop and this? Mm. And, and they went to Googling my name and, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, yeah, so we won't be able to let you in. And I had on speakerphone and, 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 and my, I'm around all my girl cousins, you know, they hood and shit. They from Ninth and Grove and shit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So they immediately start going off like, oh, hell no. What do you know? Everybody tripping. And so my whole thing was this. Like, anything else, I wouldn't have cared. Mm -hmm. But it, it hurt because it was from my people. And that's okay. what people didn't get. People seeing me on Facebook talking about Juneteenth. And then I was mad. And people just automatically like, oh, you shouldn't talk about Juneteenth. Or that's not right. I'm not, I'm not demeaning Juneteenth. And I'm not trying to diminish what Juneteenth is. Word. I'm not talking bad about Juneteenth. I'm saying, I feel like I'm a pillar of the community, and these are our people, and mm -hmm. we're preaching second chance. How can we be mad at the white people mm -hmm. for for shutting doors on me before you know because of my past, mm -hmm. and my own people is doing it? What? How can we? Uh, we can't even be mad at the white people with that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's why I was so mad because it was just my own people that had done it to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh. The director over it, she called me and we did talk. Okay. Um, you know, she said she'll try to make it right. And, you know, maybe we could do something next year. But where I am right now, I never work with Juneteenth mm -hmm. after that. And that's just how I feel because y'all shut the door on me and, and y'all said this. So I don't feel like y'all ever accepted me. Word. So that's got to be a challenge because, again, as you work towards being a better version of you. Right, right, right. You know what I'm right. saying? And, and that redemption. But it's also... I think there's that fine line of like, damn, you got to live with some of your previous actions. Is, is right? Because, yeah. you know, even though I think that's the path of redemption, everybody don't always forget. Right, you right. Forget with them, but everybody don't forget. But, man, kind of switching switching lanes a little bit as we, we pulling up, right? When did you first know you was funny? That's uh, a corny question, I think, to ask the comedian. But it's a like, good one. It's a real one, right? Like, when did you know you was funny? Man, bro, I've been knowing I was funny since. Shit, sure, three, four years old. I got a great memory, man. I remember uh, uh, my mama's friends coming over. They in the, you know, living room, listening mm -hmm. to music, you know, drinking, playing cards. Hey, Pooh, come in here, y'all. Do do that little dance for me. I'm in here. I'm coming in the mouth like a butterfly and bouncing back and forth. They <laughs> laughing like a motherfucker. I mean, it's just the the like I've I've been when I was funny. Yeah. Even when I was little, my mama, she kind of ordained. My mama and grandma, they kind of 
just they always said it. You gonna be a comedian mm. when you grow up. They put that on you. They put that on me. And even when uh I remember when Comic View came on, that's how me and my sister knew it was time to go to sleep. Okay. And we used to, uh stay with my grandma at the time. And my mama, you know, my uncles, they would all be in my grandma's room watching Comic View. And I remember going and actually sneaking, you know, and kind of just looking through the crack in the door, you know, and, and listening to the jokes, you know, Bruce Bruce and uh, uh, all these people, Bernie Mac, just starting out and they on Comic View and they clowning. Yeah. And I'm at the door and I hold my last hand at the door, but I loved Comic View, but that's how you know, you know, I, I've been loving comedy. From, from from four or five years old. Yeah. And I always been funny. Like, I don't remember not being funny. That's dope. Man, so you got up and did, is that where you got your dance stuff? Like, is, is that where the dancing started? Because I be watching you dance. I'm like, this man <laughs> is stiff as hell. I think, <laughs> be moving. <laughs> I think, hey, I really think that's where the dancing started for okay. real. I think it is. Because cause they, they used to do, they used to laugh at me, man. <laughs> Like, he ain't got no rhythm, they still laughing, but they always just want me to dance. Yeah. So I think that's where it came from. For that's sure. fire. That's fire. Man, when it comes to comedy, because, man, I think a lot of times I've seen, and it may have switched a little bit, but I know a lot of social media com comedians was getting flack from, like, the traditional comedies. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you can't pull off standoff. Then you look up and you see a lot of the social media com comedians acting and in movies now. Right, right, right. Um, doing stand-up. Which one is your favorite? Like the like doing skits, um, natural conversation being funny, or like doing stand up comedy? Which one is your 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 favorite bag? I think my favorite is probably uh, stand up. Okay, I think that's my favorite because you and it's a crowd and you're feeling all these laughs and these energy, mm -hmm. and it's just like everything. Like like I said, like when I get on that stage, it's just like I love attention and all the attention is on me mm -hmm. at that. So it, it it stand up, hands down, stand hands up. Down. That's fire. That's fire. I'm talking about energy. I know I done done some shows, bro. Okay. And, and I'm I'm rapping. I'm I'm in my bag. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, these niggas is just looking. Right, right, right. Facts, <laughs> facts, facts. <laughs> days I got them captivated, yeah. but they just looking. Like, what is it like? If you've had it happen on stage and it's like, okay, the crowd is here, but they is not moving. Man, I got two funny guys. Like I told you one. I told you one uh at the bingo hall. At the bingo hall, Junction City. And then one was actually right here in Wichita, Kansas, man. And and they can vouch for it, man. Uh Roderick Davis, man. Mm -hmm. It was like his 30th birthday party. I was I had just started popping in the city. So his girl. Jen, she hit me up. She hired me for the birthday party. So it's at the 30 plus lounge then. I go, they buy me hella drinks. I'm throwing drinks back. It's me and my bro Dad. Shout out Dad's the pro. You know? mm -hmm. uh, man, I'm drunk before I know it though. So I get on stage and I <laughs> and, and not to mention, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my homies is into it with some of these people in mm -hmm. here, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of people from up, you know, I'm, I'm tracking the other I'm tracking. side, and, and, uh, the and uh, man, I just that was my first. Now I'm gonna say that's that's uh, that was my first and really only time I damn near got booed. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. So, yeah, yeah, so, so, and it's like a nightmare. I don't even like think about that shit. Oh, bro, so you faded, and the enemy goes is in the building. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. They, man. they already got their guard up. Like, yeah, this nigga ain't funny. This nigga ain't funny. And then there was this woman in the crowd. She was like, "You ain't funny, nigga." I was like, "Hey," and then I fucked up because I'm, I'm like, thinking this is because I'm just now starting comedy, right? <laughs> so I don't got my come down. I like I'm just like probably like my third stand up. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, "You ain't funny, nigga." And I'm forgetting that this is a family event. I'm like, "Bitch, come up here. Let me see what you got." <laughs> So I hear motherfuckers in the crowd like, who we calling the bitch? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then the woman got up, stood up, and walked up there. I'm looking at her. I'm like, damn. I'm looking at her head to toe. I ain't got no dish for this woman. I'm pissed. And that's somebody's mama. It's somebody's mama, man. And I don't, and, and I, I know whose mama it is, but I ain't going to say who mama it is. Fair, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, man, she came to the front. And I, I was, I was going to grill her, but she came and she, she had her hair on fleek. She had a nice little body. She was a she was a good looking old woman. I couldn't say shit yeah, about. Her. Could say. I couldn't do nothing but call her a bitch, man. No, that's when you. What's your number though? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, but I, I'm ready now though. Something like that happened now. I'm ready, you know. Okay. But then I wasn't ready. So yeah, that was that was that was probably my worst show to date. Even <laughs> Junction City, and it was right here in Wichita, Kansas. So now I'm obsessed with preparing myself. I love that before a show. I love that. Like like two two three days before a show, I'm just rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. My phone on D and D. I'm in my living room. I got everything off. I got the YouTube sound making it sound like a crowd. And 100%. I'm just going in rehearsing my shit so I can just do it with my eyes closed down to the laugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Down, you know what I'm saying? And and I got I got shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got something for a haggler. Like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody want to haggle me, that's what I'm saying to them. 100%. If it's a girl haggler, I'm saying this. If, a, if it's a nigga haggler, I'm saying this. Don't haggle me. I'm going to eat your ass alive. <laughs> now, I think that's important, though, because when, when we walking in these gifts, a lot of times people think you can just show up. Right, 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 right. Right, like even when I do music, um, when I do a show, sometimes everybody don't pull up to the sound check. Right. And I'm like, bro, I take this shit serious. Right? When I was first start preparing to perform, I got the remote in my hand at this point. I got a mic at the crib just for practice. Right. right? Um, so I applaud that type of preparation because right. it, it takes talent. They say when you play with skills, good luck will happen. Right. But when you prepare on top of the skills, Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. And I can tell that you're somebody that's thoroughly prepped and prepared. Gotta be. Man, and you take your craft serious. Serious. Right? Mm -hmm. Where do you find that balance between, like, preparation and just letting it flow? Um, if you prepared enough, man, if you get up there and you got your shit 100% solid, mm -hmm. improv is just going to come. It's just gonna come because you you gonna rock the crowd. When once you get the crowd to laughing, one thing about comedy, once you get that crowd to laughing for a good five ten minutes, mm -hmm. you can do anything they gonna lie. Word. You can do anything they gonna lie. You can. I mean, so that's where it just come in. Like I gotta prepare myself, and then it's gonna flow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you come prepared, it, it's gonna flow, man. It's it's like you know when Steph Curry, uh, uh you know. He come, he hitting threes, hitting there, and then next thing you know, he's shooting and turning around and running the other motherfucking way, and they going in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I look at that as like improv too, because you ain't gonna see him shooting no shot and turn the other way if he, if, if he, you know, 0 for 8. He ain't right. shooting no shot and turning the other way. Right. He waiting to see that motherfucker fall. Practice. You know what I'm saying? But he practicing, he practicing, he ready. And then he go to turning around. So I just think preparation is everything. Yeah. That's the balance you got. You got to be prepared. I love that. I love preparation, man. Preparation prevents. Pri I had a teacher tell me prior, pre prior preparation prevents poor performance. performance. I've been wanting to say that shit the whole interview. <laughs> I stole it's your a moment. tongue twister. I stole your nah, moment. I wasn't even gonna say it on camera. That shit a tongue twister. I don't think I can say it. <laughs> nah, but it's real. Man, my my one of my math teachers back in high school would say that to me because I ain't. I ain't carrying class. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, was you a class clown? Definitely. Definitely. All the time. All the time. In fact. <laughs> to this day. To this day, man. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah. That's dope. So when we look at this city of ours, man, it's like um, everything is connected. It feels like everybody feel like they know everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Even the story you just mentioned of, of getting booed. Like, right. Right. Like, you know, everybody know everybody. Is it ever challenging to you to, like, remove yourself from... I don't want to shrink it and say local conversation, but remove yourself from like local conversation, right? right? Of like, yo, don't don't do that. Don't box me in like that. Right, right. Like, thanks. Do you? Is that a conversation you have a lot? Um, a thought rather. It's a thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thought. Definitely a thought. It's like I just, I'm not just in Wichita no more. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in many a places. Don't like you said. Don't box me in to just Wichita. For you sure. Know? So a couple of months ago. Uh, Somebody like you a Wichita comedian? No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm all over with this shit. I'm not. A, so yeah, I mean, I hate when people box me into this Wichita, but I love Wichita. I don't even know. Yeah. But I, I'm all over with this shit. Facts, as you said, you you aiming to be as big as Michael Jackson. As big as Michael Jackson. Come on, man. So they, we know <laughs> who's your who is your like comedians that have inspired you? Because when I watch you. You know, when you when you see somebody's gift, you see their talent, you can uh -huh. only see their influence. Right. I can't put my finger on it. I'm like, okay, is it is is Mike Epps? I don't know. Right. Who's, well, who's you, probably, you? you probably can't put your finger on it because it's a mix, but you definitely got it. Mike Epps is definitely my overall favorite comedian. Okay. And Mike Epps definitely has left the biggest impact on me because I got to meet him personally. 
mm. and, and mess with him personally and, and, and the conversations we had and just how cool he was and joking and not even tripping, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, I've done a couple of shows with Mike, and so he just a cool all-around nigga. Uh, Is there any game he gave you? Like Plenty of game, man. Uh, Mike gave me the game of uh, don't try to mix. Like, when it's a comedy show, mm-hmm. that's what you want to be at. You don't want to be at comedy shows slash uh, rap shows and mixing. You don't want to be that mm-hmm. like that. And, and you know what? It kind of just... It, it's here lately. It's resonant because I've been taking these shows. I did a show in Omaha, and it was with Lil Boosie and Rob Four Nine. And then you hear doing this comedy, and these people want to see Boosie. They want to see Four Nine. They don't want to see your jokes. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, damn. So after that show, I was like, man, that was a good. That was a good show. I'm glad. But then I'm gonna start asking people like, hey, man, look, is this an all comedy show or is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he gave me he gave me some good game in that, and definitely patience. You know, he just let me know how long he been doing this, man. You know, he told me, man, this is an old game, man. You know, it's been niggas grinding 20 years to get what they get yeah. right now. You know what I'm saying? But he said, well, once you get there, you ain't got to do nothing but stand on stage. He told me. He said, uh, look at Pops, that nigga from Friday. That John nigga, Witherspoon. John yeah. Witherspoon. He said, that nigga, 70 years old, standing on stage, still doing it. <laughs> Word. So really, and the beautiful thing about comedy is I'm still, uh, it ain't, it, it, I'm still a young comedian. Because mm-hmm. you got so much longevity in this game. Right. So that's kind of what what he gave me, and uh, as far as uh, like you said, uh, you can't put your finger on it. It's Mike Epps, it's Robin Harris, mm-hmm. uh, Mike Epps, Robin Harris. Uh, I say Richard Pryor, but I don't really emulate him. But I would be like a Mike Epps, Robin Harris, Ricky Smiley mix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I could see it now. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I really I, I I love day comedy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love I love Robin Harris comedy. I love Ricky Smiley comedy and Mike S would probably be the closest thing to the person I'm looking up to. For sure. Yeah. So as a student of the game, like what is it about those three that like draws you to appreciate Nate Comedy? Because Bebe Kid is one of my favorite movies I mean, off top. One of my it, favorite jokes ever. Is Mike Epps when he's talking about, uh, of course, when he's talking about being in a special needs class. Right, 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 right. Facts. When he, when he do the walk by the room, he's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. Every on time. everything. Um, and Ricky Smile, I know he's talking about dressing up as women and stuff, but when he would do the church lady on Comic View, mm-hmm. I'd be in tears. Tears. So and, what is it about them three that move you? Uh, man, Ricky Smiley, man, it's his prank calls. Uh, <laughs> okay. And if you listen to my prank calls, you hear a lot of Ricky in my shit. Yeah. It, it's his prank calls when he acting like the old woman or he acting like the nigga to stutter. It's his prank calls because he just, he that. Robin Harris, it's his stage presence. Mm. It's his stage presence. It's just like that nigga commanded the crowd. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't care. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of Bernie Mac before Bernie Mac. Word. You know what I'm saying? Robin Harris was Bernie Mac before Bernie Mac. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think Bernie Mac probably, if he was allowed to say it, he probably would list him in one. Because I see so much Robin Harris in him. But yeah. uh, yes, it's his it's, it's command of the stage. It's his, uh, I mean, it's just his stage presence. And and then uh, Mike S is everything. You know, the nigga been in jail. Mm-hmm. You know, uh you know, he he battled, you know, addictions. I never battled no drug addiction, but it was just like, oh, this dude really from the streets, and he turns his shit around, and now he yeah. doing this and and being goofy. Because being from the streets and then turning around and being goofy, you know, that's some hard shit to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that's gonna really just write you off, like, oh, that nigga goofy now. You know what I'm saying? Word. Type shit, and and it ain't like it ain't like a nigga care about it because, you know. I know what I am, you know what I'm saying, and I know where I'm trying to go. So what somebody got to say about me is at least I'm honestly at that stage in my life where I don't care what people say about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, people going to talk. Like, like man, I know the coolest people in the world. Like, people that I'm like, man, this nigga so cool. And then I hear somebody say something bad about him. I'm like, damn, <laughs> you can't win. Like, damn, it's just like you will never get 100% love. Never. I think that's unheard of. It's always going to be somebody in the background hating, throwing dirt on your name. I always say some will love you, some will hate you, and you can't please everybody. You can't. Yeah, that's <laughs> facts. So, that's it. Man, so you got my mom moving because, you know, it's thinking out loud. So we just right, be thinking facts. out loud. 
you know, I noticed a lot of some of the, the funnier comedians, the funniest comedians I've seen, like they're able to channel like this inner pain thing, right, right, like right. this inner real life thing. And even as you talk about Mike Epps, like he um, is self depreciating almost. You right. talk about the special needs, talk right. about all the stuff he's been through. When I watch Kevin Hart, you'll hear him talk about the the his kids and all of the bull crap he had to deal with. Um, Bernie Mac talking about the fan, like. Some of the funniest jokes come from like a, like exactly. a deep space. Like, what's that deep space that you draw from to to make the world laugh? Uh, man, it's just growing up, growing up. I mean, growing up in the hood, not having everything that you you know you might have wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, dealing with women and, and, and jail, prison, just this, you know coming from you know what I'm saying, battling this identity crisis. You know what I'm okay. saying? Talk to me. That so you know, like for so long you want to be this person, and then you grow up and you're like, man, that ain't me at all. You know what I'm saying? So all I kind of right. so so I never really drop skits or do do jokes that's not relatable. So we can all relate to being in the hood, not having everything you wanted, getting whoopings, you know, uh, facing adversity at school or mm -hmm. in the hood or with women. So. Uh, them was the places I, I come from. Being left in prison, like I said, I, I got left. So I got a lot of jokes about uh, females leaving niggas or doing mm -hmm. niggas wrong, because uh, yeah, all that shit hurts. So that's what you said. You coming from the painful place, it all hurts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, like I think that uh, I, I never know. Like my my pops was in prison a lot growing up. Okay. So. I never really had nobody, you know, my mama, she was doing all she really could, so I never had nobody to really just take me down to the Bulldogs field and say, hey, you know, mm. jump in there, it's my son, you know, he'll make a good running back. And I felt like I was good as a kid in sports, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I just never had, you know, that that platform to shine on, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so uh, I think that's a, that's a hurtful place. Like, dang, I wish I could have did that, you know, and I make sure now I do it with my sons, like, Give my son a chance, you know. My, I got a son that's a linebacker that's good, and I got a son that's a quarterback. He out there doing his thing, and I'm like, damn, bye. bye. He, he, he nice, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, but they've been getting their ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> they've been getting their ass whooped, man. But this they crazy. But they, I mean, both grades, man. But we're going to get it together, man. But they've been getting their ass tore out the frame, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, man, okay, so we talked a little bit about your, the, um, the previous circle you moved around with, right? Right. But now I see your circle now. It's strong. It's strong, yeah. So facts. I see, like, Marquise Bradley. Facts. Right? I see Desmond Bryant. Facts, right? yeah. Um How important is it for you now to have that circle of, like, men, that, that true iron sharpening iron? Right. Right? Lifting yeah. each other up. Like, what is that like? How important is that for you? Man, it's, it's very important, man. It's pivotal. Uh, uh because these are the people that's gonna keep you on the right track. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that you can also look to, like me and Coach Cheese, Marquise Bradley, we've been friends for, man, 20, 20 25 years, best friends. So uh, seeing him where he's at, he set out, he made a plan and he executed it. And so it's like, I can go there, I can do this. We from the same place. Mm -hmm. He ain't have nothing better than I had. So wow. our conversations are always, you know, so no, you know, we joke around, we fuck off, we do that too, but it's always about progression and moving yeah. forward. And then, you know, Dez, that you know, he a poet, so he just a, <laughs> he a critical thinker all the time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The nigga be yeah, shit. We be shooting dice, he be doing poetry and shit. You know what I'm saying? So he so it's good to have somebody like that around because you like him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's a Desmond is a real he's a thinker. 100%. He's thinking all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I can I can be mad and I call Des like, man, hey man, this bitch just did this. You know what I'm saying? What you think I do? Des on the other one I come, like, well, probably grab your stuff and just, you know, I I wanna hear that shit. <laughs> Tell me some gangster shit, Dad. I ain't I got the wrong nigga. Oh, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, he right though, so you need people yeah. like that because I got people that I could call that that tell me to do some shit that'll land me in jail too. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Then when I calm down from being mad, I'm like, why the fuck I called in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's real. That's real, man. So uh, uh, some parting questions I want to ask, man. So seeing how far you've made it mm -hmm. and knowing your journey is like, 
like you said, you young comedian. It's just getting yeah, started. Just getting started. Ill. I went to see, I grew up on comedy if you like you. Yeah. And just last year I seen Bruce Bruce. Okay. Live. And I'm like, damn, I grew up watching him. Grew up watching And him. now he's still getting his thing off, still right? Man. So from where you are currently, from where you've been, where do you see yourself in the future? Like what's what's five years from now? Affirmation is key. Man, right. five years from now, I'm gonna be on that fuck. I'm gonna be on the big stage. Hundred percent. Five years from now, I'm gonna be hosting the BET Awards. I'm speaking that into existence. I like know? that energy. And then we can go back. You know what I'm saying? Because I just feel like that's key. Five years from now, I'm gonna be on that big stage. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep pushing. Five years from now, I'm gonna be full blown. So yeah, you mess with me now, because five years from now, it's just over with. Because Price going up. Because because I feel like in my comedy career, I just kept going up, going up, going up, and uh, you know uh. I feel like, I feel like I, uh, I think I feel like I changed the comedy in Wichita, Kansas. I believe I sparked uh, a movement. You okay, know what I'm Because when I started, when I started doing comedy, it was two, maybe three comedians. I mean, it was a uh, Brandon Win. Shout out, a to, shout out to shout out to Brandon Win and uh, Bam, Uncle Bam, and Brandon Win yeah. is the ones who talked to me and Desmond the Paul Bryant talked me into being a comedian. Word. I wasn't even gonna be a. I I, I wasn't like identifying as a comedian. I was just making funny Facebook statuses, mm. and they was like, "Man, be a comedian, be a comedian." So Brandon and uh, Bam, they had this group called uh, Ice Cream Vanilla Swirl, uh, Chocolate Vanilla Swirl. That's what it was. <laughs> With Brandon and uh, Bam, they was Chocolate Vanilla Swirl. That was a group. I don't know why he stopped it, but <laughs> that <sounds> crazy. <laughs> So I could feel so crazy. Y'all crazy. Yeah, hey. So uh they talked me into being a comedian and uh, I just I feel like uh it was Bam. Hold on, let me give credit. DeAndre was a, a comedian too. Mm -hmm. Kiwan was a comedian. Mm -hmm. Bam, Kiwan, Brandon, and Bam were the only comedians. But with all due respect to them, I don't feel like they had Brandon and Bam will straight up tell you, we don't do the internet. We, we stage comedians. We right here. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like when I start doing my internet shit and I start going viral, I sparked a movement in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a lot more people identifying as comedians and getting on the internet and pushing and making skits. And yeah. now you got a lot of good comedians. I came back, you know, you got... Alonzo Ross, Shout out you to know Zell. what I'm saying? You got uh, all type of comedians, man. I can't even remember their name. Uh, my little partner, uh, uh, man, what's his name? Uh, Daquan Allen, you know what I'm saying? He taking his hand at uh, comedy. Yeah. And he good, he funny, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So and he rapped too, don't he? He rapped too, okay. yeah, he rapped too. But he he, he all around talented dude. Fire. But uh, man, it's just it's a lot of people, man. I just, I believe I started that movement of internet comedians in Wichita, Kansas, and I and I definitely can't forget, I was never gonna forget him, but I just wanted to give him a personal shout out of my boy PJ the Great. PJ is I came PJ back hilarious. and he was doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I just felt like I influenced that. I sparked that. I feel like I changed the comedy in Wichita, Kansas. You know That's what I'm saying? That's so fire. I just feel like shoot, I'm a staple because of that. Off top, hey, you mm -hmm. gotta claim it, man. Sometimes you gotta pop out and claim your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I when, I, when when I was heavy with the with the music, I would talk my shit, and they didn't like it, but it was yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of truth to it. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. Um, but man, everybody you mentioned is hilarious in their own right, man. And shout out to all of them. It's funny, me and Stu, Stu, Big Brandon, uh -huh. right? Um, Vir that's my Virgo brother. Okay, okay. I almost want to say we share a birthday. Yeah. Um, Bam, Bam will hit me up every time he got a comedy show going. I got to pull up. Bam, I'm going to pull up, I promise. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kiwan, that's my brother as well. It's been dope to see a lot of their journeys. Right, right. So, um, like you mentioned, PJ, PJ is. PJ, yeah. PJ is. That man is. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, <laughs> man, he, <laughs> he got to keep that you, news. You can, PJ is best when he, I tell him all the time, like, nigga, you the best when you dressing up. <laughs> And doing, don't dress like no bitch, don't dress like no girl, <laughs> but you the best when you're dressing up, doing your karate shit and you yeah. lose, you can use. PJ, keep going with that, my nigga, you know For what I'm sure. saying? So. And I think y'all all are important to the culture and the growth. When we look, I always call it the black renaissance, right? right? I think there's so many pockets of entertainment, pockets of culture, pockets, politics, pockets of business, where we really elevate in our city 
and making our city that much bigger with these gifts and talents. So right, right. y'all all playing a, ma a major part, and I love to see it. No facts, facts. So, the, the other question I gotta ask, I love to talk about growth. Right. I love to talk about reflection. Um, so if you could tell 10 years ago, what would you tell? I don't know how old you are, but what would you tell Pooh 10, 10 years, years ago? 10 years ago. Yeah. And I look straight at him and I say, hey, bro, get on your shit. Stop. Yeah. Stop living day to day. Stop blowing your rent money at the <laughs> casino. Stop nutting in these girls with no condom. Stop, man. Stop running around with these niggas. Stop. You know, just stop and think. No, on a serious note, stop. I would tell myself to just stop and think, mm -hmm. and make a plan and execute it because Ten years ago, I was still very much lost. Ten years ago, twenty-five, I was still, I was a grown man and I was lost. I think I had four kids ten years ago. So, mm. just baby mom over here, baby mom over there, doing typical shit. So I would just tell myself, like, you know, one day you're gonna have to, you know, step into your 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 manhood. Word. And so I would tell myself to take my time. Don't worry about what people think, because I still care very much so what people thought about me at 25. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I did a lot of shit to impress other people. I would take that all the way out of my repertoire at 25 and just do you, plan, execute, and take care of your business. I love that. I love that. Reflection is key, because I it think is. even if you reflect on 10 years, it, it's a reminder for now. Even. Facts. So. It is. Pooh, before we part, anything else you think it's important for the people to know? Uh, man, look, I think it's important for the people to know. Uh, well, y'all already know, I'm getting ready to be in a movie in Dallas, Texas. Uh, you know, uh, I'm in a stage play here in Wichita Fire. and uh, Fire. different little stuff like that. And uh, I just want to urge, one thing I want to say on this interview is uh, shout out to my boy Troy Andrews. Shout out to Bray Films mm -hmm. for... Uh, getting the movies out and, and you know, all of that. And I want people to urge people to say, you know, a lot of people say, Pooh, why ain't you in no Brave Film movies? Why ain't you in no Troy Andrew movies? Y'all got to ask them. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to ask them, man. I see, yeah. I see Bray, Bray my nigga though, but I see him, he's like, I got a movie, so I'm gonna get you, I got you. You know what I'm saying? That shit, Bray been telling me that shit five years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I. I don't understand it either. I don't understand how I can go so hard and be the hottest and mm -hmm. not be in any, any, a brave movie. You know, mm -hmm. Troy, you just started, so I'm gonna give you, you know, I'm gonna give you a pass, man. <laughs> y'all better, y'all better change some shit now. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I like. I won't speak for the brothers, but I know it's a, it's a level of like discernment when you got a strong vision, right? And you see it a certain way, because like Troy's my man's. Facts. I'm Mine supposed too. to be in a whole bunch of different movies. And he's like, I got the one for him. Like, I just pressed him at the blackout ICT. Like, bro, you yeah. good. <laughs> What's happening? But I know, like, when you got that vision, it's like, even with music, like, certain artists I haven't collaborated with. Because yeah. it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. I feel that. And again, I, don't, I ain't speaking for those two, but I know your level right. and where you going, you're you going to be on one of them ones that's they great now. Where we going? Right. Facts. You feel me? So that's dope. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna chop this part. And that's gonna be the intro to the video so they see that. And it's gonna be comedian yeah. challenges, directors like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. That's gonna be dope. That's that's how you get them views. I should just get up and start tripping like that. <laughs> Throw my hat down and shit. Hey, people gonna click on that. <laughs> That's the intro right there. That's yeah, the intro. Yeah. But no, nah, Pooh, man, I definitely, I appreciate you pulling up. Man, man. I um, appreciate you, bro. And just just uh, letting me into your world a little bit, opening right. up in this space. Man, I always tell folks, it's the, it's the most genuine space I think you can pull up to and just have conversation. We just think out loud. Thanks. And I'm prayerful. I'm confident. That you continue to mash in your space, bro. Continue to level up your, your comedy, right. level up with your family, like taking your gifts to the highest of highs. Right. I think you've seen some of the lowest of lows with, your, with where you've been. <laughs> the most so sky ain't even the limit for you, bro. It's the point of view. And, Facts. and I know, I, like that. I know what God got for you, bro. I appreciate you to the max. Man, I appreciate you too. I mean, thanks for having life. me on the platform, yes, man. Indeed. This yes, is something indeed. I've been wanting to do for years. So, yeah, y'all see it? <laughs> I like that. 
Loved ones, this has been Thinking Out Loud with Samuel David with my special guest, Pooh Hefner. We out.